that was very genuine. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray for a little bit before we start. Father God, thank you so much uh, for the fact that you give us an incredible plan for our lives, that you want so much for us to know your word, to understand, to feed on it, to hunger and thirst for um, you, God. And uh, just thank you so much that you give us first principles. Yeah. um, Because we need so much to have clarity. We need so much to have guidance. Um, It's so awesome to know that whenever we answer questions about you, we can go to the scriptures. Yeah. That we don't have to spout out our opinions or our emotions or our thoughts and our attitudes. But we can spot out your word and uh, we can turn to them. And we have BibleGateway.com and uh, we have so many resources. But God, thank you, especially for first principles to just guide us and direct us in the basic principles of uh, just Christianity. Mm -hmm. So many things that people out there wish they understood or want so much to have clarity and are confused. Um, So many people uh, that are religious leaders uh, don't have clarity on a lot of these basic principles. So thank you so much, God, that we have something to offer this world, God, that's just profound and from you. Uh, But we're so grateful, God, that we can be your ambassadors. Ambassador Ressis. But we want so much to please you and honor you, God. Help us to treat your word with uh, the the gratitude, the appreciation, um, and to, to long to pour out that grace upon other people um, because you've given us so, so much with uh, just our lives as well as um, especially our spiritual lives. Yeah. God, we want so much to honor you tonight. Help us have a, a great time. Help us to be concise. <laughs> Help me to have the words, God, to speak and preach tonight. Thank you so much. We love you. We thank you and pray this in your awesome son's name. Amen. 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 All right, so here we are. It is first principle. So bear with me. This is my first time teaching first principle, really. Me, the brothers teaching it. So, um, so we'll st- we're gonna. This is gonna be a, a little longer than usual. So prepare yourselves. But I'm gonna bounce through this. So pay attention and write it, write notes. And you guys already have this handy, right? Yes. So if, oh, if anyone did not get one, can someone please help me hand them out to them? So awesome. So we're going to start with the introduction, and we're going to discuss a little bit about the book of John and how we go about with those studies, as well as we're going to do the Seeking God study. So we're going to, I'm going to teach you how to teach these Yay. things. And so, um, so firstly, uh, let's flip to Hebrews 6. You guys can turn there. So the purpose of this class, the whole point is we really want to take the Word of God very, very seriously, yeah. right? And uh, the, so this is like a, this is basically school, you know, for God. <laughs> it's like a mini ICCM. <laughs> so, because um, if you think about, you know, when you study the hardest, when you put your most effort to any subject, any, um, you know, practice of any sort, whether it be dance or, uh, dance. you know, whatever, whatever <laughs> suits your fancy, you, you know, so for you to really invest that much time or more, you know, in studying up for first principles. Because it's it's going to help save souls, yeah. and it, it very well will save your own as yeah. well. And so, anyway, I just really want to make sure we walk through the purpose of this class session. Uh, we're going to, I mean, the whole series. So yeah. Hebrews six, are you guys there? Yeah. All right, Hebrews six, verse one. It says, "Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God." Instruction about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. So God wants us to move on from elementary teachings. Yeah. Because a lot of us, we've already learned this, but now we have to make sure we're able to teach it. So we need to go on to maturity. Um, And Hebrews 5, if you flip back to just that previous chapter, verse 11. It says, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you're slow to learn. In fact, though, by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who, by constant use, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So again, this is to lead us on to maturity. And a lot of us, we've been around the kingdom a long time. Maybe this is your tenth time going through first principles. I, you know, I, I don't know how many times I've gone through first principles. Uh, but that's okay. Yeah. Because honestly, um, or even if you're a baby Christian, what, no matter how old you are physically or spiritually, 
the point about maturity is that we have to be using this yeah. and putting it into practice. It's not about age, right. physically yeah. or spiritually. Yeah. So that's awesome, right? You can be young physically, but be fired up spiritually and be able to put be mature. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we can be older, mature women in that's our right. physical age, but we could be lacking. So let's make sure yeah. we are Come mature on. when it comes mm-hmm. to our walk with God and really yeah. distinguishing good from evil exactly. and making sure we have constant use of the scriptures in our lives. Yeah. All right, so the first point of why we are taking the first principles is to solidify your faith. Yeah. 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 So first John five two, you can write that down. It says this is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his command. So it's it's love, right? It's all about love. Uh, yeah. John thirteen, thirty four, thirty five. Come on. You guys can flip there. But who knows this one? <laughs> Somebody previously passed first principles. <laughs> I would, mem- would have memorized this. Yeah. So that's something we're going to do. We're going to be memorizing some scripture. Um, but John 13, 34, it says, A new command I give you, love one another. Yeah. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Mm-hmm. And right, that's, isn't that the greatest commandment that Jesus gave us? Yeah. Yeah. To love one another, right? And this is really what's going to solidify our church family. We need these reminders to put these things into practice for us to love one another in that way, to remind each other as we do these studies, but also to help love other people, to draw them into God's kingdom. You know, um, Because when you think about it, what, what affected us the most? What impacted us the most when we came to church? It was the love. I had girls giving me waffle dogs and driving me around while I was doing Bible studies. I was like, who are you people? Like, why are you guys so nice to me? You don't, you don't know me very well. It's foreign, right? But that's what the whole point is, to love people into God's kingdom. Um, and it's not something that's natural for us, right? Um, and so it's something we're going to have to make sure we work at and win people over by our love. But what I love about the first principles is that it's indisputable. Yeah. You know, and I think we have to feel confident in that. Because we might be walking in, like, shaking, like, oh, this, ch- this study is going to challenge my friend here. Or I don't know if I'm going to be able to say the right words. But if you are just focused and study this out for your quiet time before you walk into a study, and you guys are going to be memorizing these scriptures along the way, you're going to feel fully equipped. Yeah. And you, be, you should be able to feel confident to carry out yeah. God's word. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's it's indisputable. If you, if someone's willing to accept God's word, then th- they're good to go. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. And this is really going to build deep, deep conviction, mm-hmm. not just for our friends, but for us. Yeah. It's going to help good. solidify our own conviction mm-hmm. yeah. to make sure we are solid on God's word. Because mm-hmm. when we teach, even just seeking God, we, you can do that for your quiet time tomorrow and be blown away. Yeah. And be like, oh. Uh, uh. I'm not doing with all my heart yeah. today. You know, and so we, we can always go back to these principles and make sure we're really living it out personally in our, in our walk. <clears throat> Philippians 2, let's turn there. So who's excited about maturing in the faith? Come on. And we never, never have to be old in the faith, right? We can always keep maturing. There's always room for growth. Philippians 2, let's look at verses 1 and 2. All right. It says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Isn't that awesome, that whole last sentence? It's like, mm-hmm. like-minded, same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Mm-hmm. Like, the second thing... The second purpose of first principles is unify. Yeah. Yeah. Unify. It unifies us. It helps us be one in spirit and purpose. Mm-hmm. We get to enjoy studying the Bible with one another. Yeah. We get to pull together and pray with yeah. each other. We get to love our friend together and cry over them and pray for them. Yeah. You know, uh, Matthew 28. Let's look to that one. So solidify, right? What's the second one? Unify. Unify. Does anyone know the last one? Multiply. Multiply. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Matthew 28, 18. It says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. What is this verse full of? Verbs. (laughs) Go, make, baptize, teach, (laughs) obey. (laughs) You know, um, we got to actively be doing these things or we will not multiply. Yeah. You know, um, and so what did he teach? He taught us to go and make disciples. And what did disciples do? Make disciples. And what did those disciples do? Make disciples. And then so on and so on, right? So isn't that crazy? crazy it's yeah. that tree it oh, keeps branching out exponentially my. you know the, the never ending tree never gets too heavy right <laughs> Jesus holding us up <laughs> so solidify what else unify, unify and multiply. Multiply. multiply easy peasy right S-U-M sum that is the sum of the matter <laughs> so let's walk through um, what the point is right we want to win people for Christ right so one thing we want to make sure we do is we start great <laughs> friendships great relationships Relationship. Yeah. Um, so we want to make sure we're praying to love unconditionally because it's easy to go I need to do a Bible study time to go to a study you know versus yeah. well I'm going to love this person I want. I really want to get to know her I really want to love her I really want to be mm-hmm. best friends with her Amen. like having a vision before you even walk into the study mm-hmm. to go who is this person going to be as a disciple what kind right. of Bible talk will she lead what kind of house church what kind of mm-hmm. women's ministry in a church somewhere in Germany you know <laughs> I don't know you know yep. but like really praying to have vision for people that we meet Come on. Um, you know again love is foreign because so many women are abused mistreated yeah. and used in the world you know and it's there's a lot of mistrust yeah. and so what is our job our job is to win them over with our yeah. love because of Jesus and by our love so bring someone with you (laughs) because you can't show your love without someone else there too Mm -hmm. you know and it's going to be all the more powerful when you win people together yeah you know um in reaching out to people um you know you're we get close to people so quickly we become best friends with them in just a matter of a few weeks right because we pour out our sin we talk about our hearts we talk about our deepest you know, thoughts and insecurities and fears and, you know, emotions. It's exciting. Yeah. But I know women, we get scared to do that too. Come on. Because we do it over and over again. Yeah. yeah. You know, but just remember why we're doing, we're doing what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, holding to that faith. Yeah. And the second thing you want to do is make sure you buy them a Bible. Yeah. You know, I, I love the little Goodwill <laughs> finds. <laughs> they don't have a Bible. Boom. <laughs> I got a collection. Come on. You know, um, buy them a physical Bible and then um, you know because a lot of people have different types of versions and you want to help them have one that's very simple easy reading the NIV 84 is the one where I'm going to be reading from Um, it's it's a very accurate translation phrase by phrase Um, and so it's and the 2011 NIV is fine as well Um, so our memory scriptures are going to be either the NIV 84 or 2011 versions so please don't memorize the King James because that will throw us all off (laughs) but um, but you know give them a Bible with a special handwritten note in there you know and then another thing we want to do is win people for Christ by understanding their background you know before you study you want to know what is their faith you know what do they believe are they Buddhist do they even believe in Jesus you know do they come from a denominational background you know what kind of faith do they have um because some don't have that faith in Jesus. They yeah. don't believe that he really died, resurrected from the dead. You know, mm-hmm. he died for our sins. So th- that's where we want to start with. What do we start with? The book of John, yeah. if that's the case. Mm-hmm. You know, and so we'll walk through that in a moment. Um, but also to win people for Christ, we want to build a great friendship. Yeah. Um, which we already said. <laughs> but we want to make sure we share our lives in First Thessalonians 2 8 you can just write that down it says we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God but our lives as well because you have become so dear to us Amen. so in summary um, what we want to do to win people is buy them a Bible ask them a lot of questions to get to know their, their faith and their life you know, and then give up our hearts yeah and make sure we, you know, we have to pray to do that because we, we keep pouring ourselves out, you know, yep. like Jesus did for us. 
So, um, and then the John studies. We'll start with that. Um, you know, I, I, I actually, I didn't know I was going through John studies when I studied the Bible. They, went, <laughs> they walked through a few of the John passages with me when I studied the Bible because I had very minimal faith in Jesus. I did not ever, actually, I didn't even know who Moses was and uh, Noah. That's why I always get them mixed up, Moses and Noah, because they, they <laughs> supposedly both have those long white beards. <laughs> you know, but I needed to understand who Jesus was. So, um, and I think it's incredible because anyone, guys, anyone can become a disciple, yeah. no matter what faith they come from, what background, yeah. or what lack of faith they have. Yeah. You know, um, but we need to, again, be equipped in order to teach them and train them and help them. You know, how do you start? Well, the book of John, right? We talked about that for those who don't have a faith in Jesus. So John 20, verse 30, if you guys could flip with me there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So why do we turn to the book of John? So for one, you know, the Gospels are, you know, accounts of Jesus' life. But um, John 20, verse 30 through 31, it says here, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Mm-hmm. Isn't that incredible? We yeah. can have life in his name by believing in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, there, That's where the faith is going to be rooted and coming from, is Jesus. Um, and so we want to bring people to faith through the John studies. Um, and it's, it's something, you know, you're going to see their faith right. grow. Because it comes from nothing. It has only one direction to go, right? Yeah. But to grow. And so we got to break down those barriers because I think people can feel intimidated by the Bible, right? Because some people grew up with those big fat ones sitting on the the coffee table and no one touches, you know, it just collects dust. I've heard of them. Um, But, you know, um, but studying John will help them see that the Bible's for everyone. You know, the Bible's for everyone. Because, yeah, even if people come from a religious background, a lot of them never read it. (laughs) So you might have to start with the John studies there, too. Um, or have made assumptions about Jesus, you know. Um, and so, again, we want to make sure we're reading from the same version because that will make it a lot easier as we do the Bible studies. We'll, um, we'll have to do more work, you know, because the goal is to keep it to, like, no more than an hour. You know, you don't want to mm-hmm. overwhelm people with too much brain information. Yeah. Um, so setting up a study, you know, we have, uh, you know, a more mature Christian usually leading the study, and then we also have a younger Christian along with them to help take notes, to give their heart, to share their lives as well. Um, And so who is this young, fired up disciple? Let's give them a girl name. I'm so excited. We never do girl names. (laughs) Three. Stella. Stella. Amy. Amy. Wait, what? My name is Alice. I like Stella. 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 Come on, Stella. Go, Stella, go. And, and who's uh, the name of our Bible study friend? Oh, what's Yolanda. Yolanda? Yolanda. Yeah, Kathy. What? Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. Yolanda. <laughs> we're, we're all coming up with crazy names. Um, Alexa. Grace. 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 Majority rules, Grace. Okay. Grace Stella. Grace, Grace is studying the Bible. Stella's my right hand. Come on, Stella. <laughs> so, you know, so who's studying uh, Grace? Oh, can I switch the names? No. Okay, sorry. Grace. Okay, Grace is studying the Bible. I don't know why Stella just sticks really well in my head. <laughs> so, okay. So, what we want to do in the Bible studies is we want to trade off reading, right? Because yeah, for one, you're talking a lot as you yes. read the studies. Because I'm talking a lot up here, guys. And then, um, but you want to take turns. You'd say, okay, let's, I'm going to read verses 1 through 18. You read uh, Stella. Can you please read uh, verses 19 through 28 as you read yeah. John 1? And then Grace will read uh, 29 through 34. You know, and then as you read, you take breaks and you discuss what you just read. And you ask Grace questions, you know, what she learned and what she got out of the passage um, and reiterating every time as you read that this is an eyewitness account okay. isn't that crazy yeah. like if you really put it in those terms it's not just some nice fluffy right. story this was an eyewitness account this is real life that truly happened you know yeah. um, 
And uh, so John 1, 1 to 18, that was read to me. And I was so grateful for that because um, it's impressed in my mind, you know, to this day. But it says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And I was like, what? (laughs) What? Um, So we read that whole section. And I was able to understand that the Word was God. The Word was with God from the beginning. Who was with God from the beginning? Jesus. Jesus. Through all creation. You know, um... And so, uh, you know, and that Jesus is the Word. And therefore, how are we going to learn about God? But through the Word. Right. That's how we're going to learn about Jesus, you know, and and that's how we're going to learn God's heart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was so grateful, and I love that, because I think it's so important to fall in love with God. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can just go through, and I don't know, people can read this and start, and we as disciples can fall into that trap where we become legalistic and yep. it's just a bunch yeah. of rules that we're trying to obey and follow but remember we're trying to stay in love with God and we're trying yeah. to call others to fall in love with God wow. and Come so um, let's keep everyone engaged in the study right yeah. so trade off the reading yeah. you don't want people to zone out and then also you can gift them a notebook yeah. you know you got yeah. nice deals at Ross and you know, wherever <laughs> at Target wherever um, you know and just just break down the scriptures as you read through it Come on. Um, and John 2 was also read to me about Jesus turning water into wine and then uh, Jesus clearing the temple and I was you know we read about Jesus getting angry yeah. and flipping over tables I was like oh it just took away that stoic um, expressionless Jesus that you see all the time, you know, right. like Mona Lisa face or something, yeah. you know, but that's not Jesus. Right. He was passionate, yeah. you know, and so it helped me understand that Jesus yeah. wasn't just this, uh, gotcha. yeah, or just this thing on a necklace, you right. know, that there was so much more to who yeah. he was. Um, and it helped me understand his heart, you know, God's heart yeah. and how he had, uh, what is that word? Um, he was indignant, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was truly indignant when it came to sin and mistreating God, yeah. you know. Um, so just take, you know, three, four chapters at a time. You can break it down in the Bible study, you know, and move on to the next, the next studies. Try to meet more than once a week so you can move through the study yeah. quicker, you know. Um, and, you know, if they, you feel like they really, un, you know, are really studying on their own, digging deep about into the book of John, then, you know, amen, move on to the Seeking God study. Yeah. You know, you gauge that. But um, sometimes you have to just keep reading over these scriptures with them, even maybe having quiet times with them about this mm-hmm. in particular. Um, you know, and again, we need to make sure we have love and faith for these people because they don't have it. Right. And they're going to be borrowing that faith from us. So let's make sure we come in equipped to having our own meaty, awesome, quiet times with God. And so what I want us to do um, is what we're going to do is we're going to be having quizzes every session. So this session we will not because it's our first. So Sunday is our next session at the leaders meeting, which is 2.30 p.m. this Sunday right here. And so there's going to be a quiz. In particular, you guys are going to have to know these things. Session one, scriptures. Um, well, the memory scriptures are Jeremiah 29:11 and Matthew 6:33, and it's again in that book that you received. And then the purpose—you need to know the purpose of the first principles, which is what? Multiply, multiply. Yes, awesome. And then uh, thirdly, what book do we need to study if someone does not have faith in Jesus? John. So that's like easy peasy, guys, right? Yeah. But this is the part. You're going to have to know the Seeking God study, too. Yeah. Scripture by scripture and the point. Good. So that's a little trickier. But I'll give you a clue because this is what I did back in Portland and we did it. We're like, how do we memorize the Seeking? It's a lot of scriptures. But the acronym is Pima Jajan. (laughs) 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 Kind of like supercalifragilistic, right? But... You laugh, you laugh, but it will save your soul. (laughs) It will save a soul. (laughs) Look it up. Pima Jajam. That's it. (laughs) That's a major giveaway, guys. Major giveaway. All right. Hope that helps you guys. Now you're set for life. All right, and you want to make sure by session eight, so we're in session one right now, so by session eight, you want to read KipMeKing.com. Yeah. It's our history of the movement and everything on Kip's uh, life story there. Um, Session 11, uh, by session 11, we're going to turn an outline of the, turn in an outline of the book of Acts. 
Thanks, guys. Good. So we'll have some homework, mm-hmm. and then we're doing three bullet po- points per chapter. Mm-hmm. And then we're also going to be memorizing the books of the Bible. Come on. So and then, uh, oh, <laughs> session ten. Well, there's a quiz at every session, but we're, uh, these are specific homework assignments that I'm going to do in the future mm-hmm. that you're going to have to start soon, so you're ready mm-hmm. for it to turn it in then. Yeah, because the Acts Acts outline is every book in the book of Acts. So. 26? What is it? 27? 26. Sorry, bad memory. But um, so we want to make sure we start preparing for these things. Come on. Amen. So um, I'm going to just zoom through the Seeking God study. Is that cool, guys? Yeah. 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 Considering a break, but it's going to be a long night if we take a break. So let's look at our Seeking God study. All right. So again, what? How do we want to start every study, though? What is it that we want to fill ourselves up with? Pray. Yes, let's pray before we start our Seeking God study. Well, why don't we pretend we are in that study? So <laughs> let's pray. <laughs> Father God, please be with Grace as she studies Your Word. Um, we're so grateful <laughs> that we get to um, study out Your Scripture. Yeah. Um, that You want so much for her to learn and know Your heart. And I pray so much that You can help us all to really dig deep into the scriptures to find out how to seek you with all our heart. Mm-hmm. But we're so grateful for you. We love you and pray this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Awesome. So going into the Seeking God study. Some of us like to talk a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it can really hurt the study, though, because it's going to take away from yeah. the scriptures. Because yeah. we don't want them to walk away remembering our words more than Jesus' words. Yeah. Yeah. And we have awesome things to say, but let them be impacted by God's word yes. more than anything else. So again, keep it less than an hour. Be crisp. So, um, mm-hmm. And don't wait till the end of the study to call people to a decision. Because yeah. sometimes we wait till the end and you're like, do you want to seek God with all your heart? And they're like, oh, what does that exactly mean? You know, right. It helps them to retain as they stop and think through each scripture. Mm-hmm. So we call them to a decision at each scripture. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to, we have to be careful not to just make people more religious, mm-hmm. you know, or right. just feeding them information. We want right. to help them to yeah. really embrace loving God, calling them to life change. Come on. Because you can change a lot just by doing the Seeking God study. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we want to make sure we're all learning together that we're not going to be um, controversial or adversarial. Like, just be calm. Your body language, don't get all hyped up, you know. Um, start raising your voice if they're being, you know, contrary to what you're saying or the scriptures. Yeah. You know, we want to give every, get every opportunity to build them up in love. Um, because it's, it's a new experience for them, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. People easily walk away from these things because yeah. they, they, you see one thing, one flaw, and then they walk off, you know. Yeah. And so let's really win people over by our love. Um, yeah. Psalm 119, 119, let's look there. We'll turn to our first scripture. And so um, I will read the first scripture in Psalm 119. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. And it says, Blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Grace, do you know what the word blessed means? Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, maybe, like, getting gifts from God, you know, mm-hmm. his kindness. Well, it actually means superlatively happy, mm-hmm. according to this verse. And um, and the thing about happiness is it's the goal, right? But what mm-hmm. do we want to make sure we're doing is we're seeking God with all of our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the major goal. And that happiness is going to be that byproduct that's going to evolve <laughs> from seeking God with all of our heart. Um, and th- it says here... Blessed are they who keep his statutes. And so that's part of seeking God with all of our heart, is that we really need to dig into his word to find out who he is and what he wants us to do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and so when I read through this passage, I ask, have you ever done anything with all of your heart? Mm-hmm. You know, and they'll say, yeah, I was on the swim team in high school, and I, you know, I gave it my all. I loved it. I was super competitive. Awesome. Um, so, like, what do you think it looks like to seek God with all your heart? Um, I think it means to go to church and be committed to Him. You know, and they, they might have all kinds of answers. You know, um, and so, you know, I like to ask on a scale of one to ten, how you know where where are you in terms of seeking God? You know, sometimes they say six, sometimes they say five, uh, maybe nine, ten. You know, um, just so we can get a gauge of where they think they're at, where they see themselves at, where they might need some help, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
And also, with regards to keeping his statutes, I ask, uh, I'll ask Grace, hey, you know, how often do you read the Bible? You know, and she might say, oh, I haven't read it since, like, Christmas. Or, you know, I read it once uh, every now and then, you know. Um, and so we want to urge them to really go after seeking God. Hey, let's, you know, why don't you go ahead and start reading the book of John, you know, and, and just start reading and going after seeking God. And when I tell people to read the book of John, I tell them to pretend like they never knew Jesus yeah. in the first place. Let's like start with a clean slate, pretend like you never heard of him, and just write down who, what, when, where, why, how. Like, who is he? What is he saying? Who is he talking to? How is he addressing this? You know, how would he speak to me if I were in this scenario? You know, just to really help them to kind of clear their mind and start fresh mm-hmm. with who wow. Jesus is. So Matthew 6, let's flip there. Okay. Come on. And then I also ask, do you want to seek God with all your heart? Yeah. And okay. usually they say, yeah. Or, ooh, I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what exactly that entails. So uh, Matthew 6, 25. So our goal is to inspire them, yeah. you know, and... By our lives, that's what's going to be the most inspiring thing, you know, <clears throat> our joy, mm-hmm. um, our example. Matthew 6, we'll read starting in verse 25 <clears throat> through 34. And so now it's Stella's turn to read. Who wants to be Stella? I'll be Stella. Darby, be nice and loud and fired up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Stella. <laughs> Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and body, the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worry can add a single hour to her life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you have little faith. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Awesome. So, Grace, what is this passage about? Well, it says, do not worry. Oh, that's right. It's all about not worrying. You know, these are some of the things I worry about. I can worry about my finance. I just kind of share briefly about the things I can be anxious about. What do you worry about, Grace? And, you know, um, school's been really stressful, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, and uh, what does it say here about God in light of our worry? Come on. What well, says that he already knows our needs. Isn't that incredible? God already knows our needs before we even need them. And it's, and specifically, you know, he says the pagans run after all these things. You know, food, clothing, and what we wear. Oh, sorry, I already said that. Food, clothing, and water. You know, ultimately... And so God already knows our needs. Yeah. You know, but what does he want us to do? Mm-hmm. In verse 33, it says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Mm-hmm. Come on. And all these things will be given to you as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, hey, I would love to encourage you to go after seeking God with all your heart. You should come and visit my church. Mm-hmm. You know, we're having mm-hmm. service this Sunday at 10 a.m. Blah, blah, blah. At this address. You know, I just take advantage of any opportunity to throw things in there to help them put this into practice to seek God with all their hearts Mm -hmm. you know and the promise is that he will give us everything we need yeah you know if we seek him with all of our heart isn't that awesome grace that's awesome thanks (laughs) act 17 let's flip there my name who would like to read uh for for grace grace Come on, Lizzie. Come on, Lizzie. Um, verses 26 through 28. It says, From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Awesome. Thank you. 
So what does God do? But he determines the times and places for us. Actually, sorry, I do ask our grace first. What do you get out of this passage? <laughs> and she'll be like, oh, I'm not sure. You know, but, but God has a plan, right? He determined the times and places set for us. And why did he do that? What well, says here is so we will seek him and perhaps reach out for him, though he's not far from each one of us. That's right. And he's not far from anyone. Right? And so and so in other words, it's no coincidence there's you know, not by chance that, you know, that you've been met by Christians, you know, that God really wants you to seek him with all your heart. Mm-hmm. And he's giving you an opportunity that perhaps you'll do that. Mm-hmm. You know, um so this is where I share like a brief testimony of my life. A brief I put that in quotes because you want to keep it concise again. Mm -hmm. But I share about how I'm grateful that God opened a door for me when I was a freshman in college. Because I broke up with my boyfriend and that was my idol in my life. I sought pleasure. I sought um, just selfish, my desires. And uh, I was enslaved to that impurity in my life as well. And uh, that year I broke up with my boyfriend. Uh, Shortly after, I was invited out to open mic night on campus at the University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like having nothing to do on my weekend and I was like okay I had no idea what I was doing and I went and there was I I was not intending to go to any kind of church function somehow I just heard that it was an open mic night and uh, it was perfect for me because if it was bible bible praying and all this stuff I wouldn't have gone Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have gone and so God knew exactly what I needed to do and where I needed to go and it was through a friend that I had a class with previously so it wasn't a stranger I think God just knew all the factors involved that I needed um, and I finally went out to church after that she invited me for over a month you know I finally went out studied the Bible and in three weeks I got baptized Amen. you know um, so I share that and I ask uh, Grace you know how do you see this working in your life where God is pursuing you you know and so she'll share well this is my history or I don't know I, or I really believe we met because God wanted us to meet because I've been praying you know, um, and so it's just an opportunity to, again, find out about their lives, find out about their beliefs. Um, you want to dig out as much as you can as you go through the study so you're not just teach, 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 mm-hmm. and there's no reciprocation yeah. in the communication. Because yeah. it's, again, building that relationship so you can help them build that with God. Amen. So John 4, let's flip to John 4. Yeah, Amy. Money. Verses 23 through 24. My daughter likes to watch this show, um, Brain Games, on Netflix, mm-hmm. and it's very fascinating, you know. But they say, like, people just don't, like, they'll, they'll put something on a screen, and they'll double up a, a word, and they won't even read it, because their eyeballs will bypass it. And there's something about, like, information, like, our brain's only going to absorb so much. Mm-hmm. So we have to make sure, like, we, what we say is going to be concise and to the point, you know, but also drawing them out so we make sure they understand. Because yeah. there's so much that can be missed, you know? Yeah. All right. So where are we? John 4. You guys there? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so I will read verses 23 through 24. It says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. So, um, God is seeking us to pursue him. Isn't that an awesome thing? Like, we're not the only ones that have to do the work. God clearly is orchestrating things and seeking us. Yeah. Um, And so, what do you think it means, Grace, to worship in spirit and in truth? And it says here that there's true worshipers. So in other words, there are false worshipers. Yeah. So we want to make sure we're really worshiping God in the proper way. What do you think that means, to worship in spirit and in truth? And she'll say, hmm, I don't really know. And I love the campus analogy. I always use it now because what they, how they explain spirit and truth is like a cheerleader. So if you have the cheerleader that follows all the rules, falls in line with everything they're supposed to do, and they say, we have spirit, yes, we do. And they're doing all the, I don't know how to do it. But, you know, they do all the right moves, but they have no spirit. Yeah. Then you have the other cheerleader that's like, woo, woo, oh, what? <laughs> and, uh, and is doing everything wrong, yeah. but clearly has energy and excitement, yeah. which is awesome, but yeah. not in, in the right place, right? right? So you need that combination of spirit and truth, yeah. or else it's not 
proper. Right. And same with worshiping God. We can sing all the songs and sing it all the right way. If our heart's not invested, it's not in spirit and in truth. Come on, I mean. You know, we could read the, all the scriptures and be uh, super, like, clear about what it says, but if our hearts are not invested, it's not spirit and truth. And the opposite is true as well. We yeah. can be, you know, singing our hearts out and yet not really having it mean a thing, you know? Because we're not thinking about what it's really meaning. So anyway, we want to make sure we worship in spirit and in truth. And that's the kind of worship God seeks. Mm-hmm. All right. Acts 17. Let's flip there. Come on, Amy. My name. Does that help you guys? Yeah. yeah. You like my little um, Love it. effect? Love it. <laughs> I might break something. <laughs> Acts 17. 10 through 12. So, um, please, Grace, or excuse me, what is your name? Stella? Is her name Stella? Yeah. Thank you. Stella, could you please read this passage for us? Oh Acts 17, 10, 10 through 12. You don't want to do that in the study. <laughs> What's your name again? <laughs> oh, Stella. She's great, oh, right? Oh, she great? Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> No, you're Stella. You're Stella. Yes. Stella wasn't paying attention. So did you feel like you No, no, no. Could you please read? <laughs> <laughs> 10 through 12. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Mm. So... Grace, why were the Bereans so noble in character? Why were they so noble in character? Because they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true, right? They eagerly examined it. So it's up to us to make sure we make the Bible our own conviction, you know, to have it as our own conviction. And uh, and obviously we need to study it every day. And so Paul, you know, when you think about Paul, he was a radically changed man. He, he used to kill yeah. Christians, imprison them, and now he's preaching the word for Jesus, you know? And so he was charismatic, he was knowledgeable of God's word, you know? Um, but God finds it of great worth still, mm-hmm. all, all the more still, you know, to really make sure we're eagerly examining the scriptures, to be like a Berean. And so we give, I like to give the Berean challenge, right? And I write an E, an E like this, and I put eagerly examine every day. And that's the, the Berean challenge is that they start reading the book of John and going over the notes from the Bible mm-hmm. study. So that's, uh, yeah, so they can start building that faith in Jesus mm-hmm. and God. Um, like the Bereans, because being a Berean is of great worth. It, like the word noble, it means of great worth. Yeah. Um, so we want so much to be that for God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeremiah 29. Let's flip there. Right. Does that sound good, Grace? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Lizzie is, Lizzie is up next. Grace, I mean. Grace is up next. Jeremiah 29. We'll read verses 11 through 14. And so, um, a little side note. Did I already say this? What? But I think one... Just a little side note, too, as we teach the scriptures, we need to make sure we walk in excited about the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't teach it in a boring fashion because yeah. that would be sin. <laughs> because we have to bring faith. Yeah. We're, bring, we're walking up to people who don't have faith yeah. or have very minimal faith. You know, or, or misled faith. And so we want to help uh, help their faith by making sure we walk in with that faith as well. All right. So, Grace, if you could please read um, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven through 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will, be, and will bring you back from captivity. 
I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Awesome. Thank you, Grace. So I'll ask Grace, you know, what do you get out of this passage? Well, he has plans to prosper, not to harm me, to give me hope in a future. Do you believe that for your life, Grace? Because I think we know scriptures. Maybe we hear it and we're like, oh, that's a nice fluffy thought for everyone in the entire world. You know, but we don't stop to think, gosh, that applies to me. Right. You know, so I ask her, do you believe that for yourself, that God has an individual plan for your life, that he longs to prosper, not harm you? Because who do people blame? When God, something bad happens, God. first thing is God, right? Yeah. A lot of the time, not every yeah. time. You know, um, and then when are we going to find him according to this passage? <laughs> when we seek him with all our heart. You know, um, and so just making sure, you know, you really go after seeking God with all of your heart and knowing that he's going to prosper you and not harm you. Because if we're not seeking him, we're going to miss that yeah. plan. We're not even going to see it when, it, yeah. when he longs so much to give that to you. Yep. You know, um, Acts 8. Let's flip there. So I think it's a good question we have to ask ourselves. Do we believe God personally cares about me? You know, do you believe that? When you got stressed out and anxious this week, did you believe that? Wow. When your plumbing blew up like mine did. (laughs) That's okay. It got cleared. We're just going to pray for a free bill or no bill from our landlord. <laughs> but anyway, Acts 8, 26 through 39. All right. Oh, jeez. Stella, I would love your help with this passage. <laughs> Woo, could you please read this one? Okay. It's 26 through 39. All right. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, to the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot, and he heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. (coughs) As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stella. That was incredible. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a long passage. We can lose people along the way. So what I like to ask is, what do you see about the eunuch's character? What do, you, what do you see? And they usually miss everything because they just are, they're like, oh, well, he got, uh, you know, he got baptized. <laughs> you know, they forgot the whole beginning. Yeah. So, um, you know, he was an Ethiopian eunuch. He was serving the queen, which is Candace you know, the Ethiopian queen, and uh, he was a treasurer, so he's very smart, he was wealthy, he was prominent, but he was also very religious, he went all the way to Jerusalem to worship, so he's a convert to Judaism, because yeah. he wasn't born a Jew, you know, and uh, yet he was so humble, because he was still willing to be taught, right. you know, um, it's incredible, um, Jeremy pulled up the miles here. It would take about 62 days to travel one way. Wow. It was like 2,500 miles from Ethiopia to Israel. Wow. And or, horses travel on average 30 to 40 miles a day. So that's 62 days. Wow. One, one way. 
So isn't that incredible? Wow. What a man of devotion. Wow. A man truly seeking God. Yeah. So believe it, guys. There are women out there that yeah. are seeking God to that. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. just have to go find them. That's right. You know, um, but the angels and the Holy Spirit are working in tandem, you know, yeah. to help us seek God with all of our hearts. Yeah. Isn't that incredible, Grace? Yeah. 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 It says that the Spirit took Philip away. It says the angel of the Lord told Philip in verse 26, go to that road. You know, so it's, it's a spiritual battle that we're in. And we have God on our side fighting for us. You know, um, and I, what I love about the eunuch is that he wasn't afraid to ask questions. Yeah. Philip was, I think of the great Poupon commercial, like the limo, and <laughs> he's like running along this fancy <laughs> chariot with his sandals, going, hey, what are you reading? Do you understand it? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, how can I unless someone explains it to me? Yeah. You know, and uh, that's incredible, right? Because yeah. he could have been like, um, tut, tut. Like, <laughs> can't you see? I am holding a scroll. You don't even have a scroll. You know, like, and he could have been like, I have a chariot. What about you? You know, I mean, mine's better than yours. You know, I don't know. He could have had this horrible attitude, but he was yeah. humble. Yeah. yeah. So this is an ideal example of someone who's truly seeking after God. Yeah. You know, I love it, and it because it builds our faith as disciples to go. People are out there that are seeking God to such a great extent. Yeah. And guess what happens? They're by water in the middle of the desert mm-hmm. enough to dunk him right because water immersion right baptism right. and so you know we all need someone to teach the bible to us yeah. and lo and behold Philip's in the desert poof, out of nowhere <laughs> the angel made him appear over there you know and then poof he goes away you know but he was still rejoicing because he knew wow. he had God now the yeah. eunuch was Rejoicing, even if his new best friend, his new best friend over a matter of I don't know how long, <laughs> a, a desert chariot ride, <laughs> you know, and magically his best friend disappeared, but he was still fired up, you know. So that's the goal is that we help people be fired up for God, that it's not leaning on us. We got to be careful not to draw people to us, but we draw people to God. Um, so this is a great example of a seeking God. So let's close out with our last verse, Matthew seven. All right, Ms. Grace, would you please read this verse for us? Verses 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Awesome. So what does this teach you, Grace? It teaches me, I, if I ask, then I will find. You know, if I knock, the door will be opened. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Like, yeah. God wants to be found by us. So if we're pursuing yeah. him and seeking him and we're asking for a relationship with him, he, you are going to find it mm-hmm. if you're going after seeking him with all of your heart. So, um, so that is our Bible study, Grace. Yay. What do you think? When would you like to do the next Bible study? And so you set it up right then and there. <laughs> Sunday after church over lunch. Sure, come on. I mean, that's a, that's a great way to get them to church too, right? Mm-hmm. Is come see the family. Come see the kingdom. Yeah. You know, and, and draw them to, to pursue seeking God actively. Because we can do these studies, but sometimes you become the only food that they, we give them right. spiritually. Yeah. And so we got to keep pushing them like, and hold them accountable. Call them up. How is it going reading your Bible? Make sure you give them the notes. Um, and so uh, Stella should have been writing notes the entire time in her nice new notebook. And so she can have these notes to go over for her next quiet time. Yeah. Her first quiet time, perhaps, right? Come on. And so, um, so it's a great, great opportunity. So, uh, guys, just a reminder. I'll just walk o- over it again. So the quiz, do you guys know when it's going to be? When are okay. okay. At what time? Where? Yes. Yeah. All of the above. This room leaders meeting room two A and B of the SDU. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so, so we're gonna have our quiz, and we're gonna also have the Word of God study next. Amen. So Jeremy's gonna be teaching that one, so you don't want to miss it. Mm-hmm. And um, so, have session one scriptures memorized, right? Yeah. Which are Jeremiah twenty nine eleven and Matthew six thirty three. Yeah. Right? We already know those, right? Mine. <laughs> Some of them. Uh, okay, and then know the S-U-M, right? Solify, unify, multiply. 
know uh, what people have to study if they don't have faith in Jesus, yeah. right? John, and also make sure we know all the scriptures for the Seeking God study and their little sub points. Yeah. Right. So what is the acronym? Oh boy, I'll be praying for you guys. <laughs> Okay, uh, listen, 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 I'll tell you, this is the secret, guys, hold it dear to your heart, it's Pima Jajam, that's on record, <laughs> mark my words, <laughs> famous words of Amy Carmela, thank you, I leave you with that. <laughs>